You know, we had an unboxing of a Marquette skillet we did. And when I pulled this thing out of there, I was looking at it and I'm thinking, oh my God, this is a really good skillet. It looks like it's gonna be nice. But then I got to cooking in it. So stick around, I'm gonna show you what I found out. Ooh, it has been a long time since we have done an unboxing and a review on a piece of cast iron. And today, what are we talking about? Marquette. We have done a lot of reviews on a lot of skillets that have come out, and you can go back and check them out because we give an honest opinion of what we think about this cast iron when we first take it out of the box till after we use it. We have got the box, and it looks like it is packaged pretty well. Ain't nothing fell out of it, so we're gonna have to have a knife to open it. And a lot of you have been complimenting on, hey, I sure like that knife. Well, this is just an, a case trapper, and then it's got wagons for warriors. It is a chuck wagon event that we do. Uh, probably for the last 12, 13 years we've been going up there, and it's Memorial Day weekend. There's a lot of wagons that gather around, and it's for a great and worthy cause of veterans and service men and women. Uh, be sure and check it out on our little website there because, folks, you don't want to miss out on it. Let's get on to what most important right here and that is the unboxing of this piece of cast iron. The Big is here, he said unboxing means there's no food, right Big? Let's just look in here just a minute before we even go any further. Investment cast, flared pour spouts and a rim, lightweight design and a lifetime warranty. Oh. Well folks, I'm gonna tell you on cast iron, it is something that can be passed down from generation to generation to generation. I'm just gonna open that back towards me it's very simple, I like Yes, it is. And it's, we're gonna read this here in just a minute, but first I wanna get this out. And folks, I do like the way that they package this to where. Hang on, let's uh, turn it around. Turn it over. What's on the side? Side, right here? I think it's just for where it's rubbed in that paper. Oh, is it like? Yeah. Oh, it comes off. Oh, It'll okay. come off. Okay. Where it's just been rubbing on that white paper. Oh, okay. Ten and a half inches. Now, let's go to thinking about that. Is that ten and a half inches from outside to outside here? Ten and a half inches on the inside. So we're going to go from pour spout to pour spout, and we're going to be at ten and a half inches. Inside is, I would say if I was guessing, pretty close to nine something. Nine inches on the money. Overall length, and I like to measure that, folks, because some of you, if you got a little oven, you need to know what'll fit in there, like if you're baking cornbread. 17 inches. The handle itself is six and a half inches. But something I do like on it is a pour spout. Now, I have poured a lot of gravy with these, and I like it that it's on both sides. I think that makes a difference to me. Uh, the handle, you can see, if I can turn it over here to you like this, it is rolled a little. It's not just flat here on the ends, so it does feel a little better on your hand. Let's look at the inside of this skillet, and you can see that it is seasoned. It's got sort of a good sort of bronze color to it to start off with. Uh, they season with a base of flaxseed oil, and folks, I have used a lot of flaxseed oil in the past, and if you keep using it time after time after time, to me, it'll get a little brittle, it'll begin to crack a little, you'll see some cracks in your season as you're going. Uh, I don't mind starting out some with a flaxseed oil, uh, but if we're gonna go back to it and really get it to take a bond where it's gonna get good and glossy black, I'm probably gonna put grapeseed oil in here. But I do like this too here where the handle is split off this instead of just coming right here. Now this handle will get hot, but I'm thinking this deal is gonna help that. It's not gonna get quite as hot as just it was just singly attached here straight to it. And for the old time people here, I want you to look. Now do you see this little raised edge on here? That is what we would call a heat ring so many years ago. Now them were developed for cast iron because they were always put on an old cast, on an old cast iron stove or an old wood stove that got really, really hot. That give it a little barrier, it did. I don't think you'll have trouble putting it on any cooking surface you want. But I do like the weight. The overall weight, it says four pounds. So this is gonna be a more to me like some of the traditional old iron that Griswold or maybe Wagner made. The skillet is baked with a flaxseed oil on it. It is ready to use, but will improve with use and additional baked on coats of oil. Preheating the skillet will make food less likely to stick. The handle will get hot, always use caution. 
allow the skillet to cool before hand washing and a little soap won't harm the seasoning just avoid hard scrubbing with abrasives dry your skillet after use with a towel on the stove don't soak in the sink it is normal for rust to show up on the skillet if it is exposed to too much moisture if you see rust on your skillet wipe it off and rub with small amounts of oil well there's a few things there that i have a discrepancy about but not too many uh, I'm still a firm believer that I'm not going to use soap, even though soap has really changed from the years from when it was light all the way up to Dawn detergent. Now, uh, if you see some rust on there, folks, and you've got some going on like that, uh, most of the time it is caused because you didn't dry it good. You didn't put it on some heat to dry that surface and you let it set somewhere and that water just sort of coated to it and made rust. Now, a little dab of salt will get that off pretty easy and then you can go back. But the most important thing I really think is to always clean the skillet as soon as you're done, dry it out really well, and then re-season just like you would any piece of good cast iron. Now folks, when we took this out of the box and we noticed this white stuff on it, some of it, when you go to rubbing it, you can feel like there's a little sticky substance, like maybe it was some kind of tape or some glue, but that'll, that'll clean off. You can see where that'll sort of roll up and come off there. So it's something that was sort of sticky to begin with, but I don't think it's gonna create no problem. All cast iron looks pretty good coming right out of the box. But uh, folks, I'm gonna put this to, a, to the test. Uh, we'll see how really, first of all, it accepts seasoning. And don't think that you're gonna get that automatic black coat finish the very first time but some of them always seem to beat up that oil. They're never t really just letting me get that first good base coat on there. So I'm gonna see how it seasons, how it cleans, how it reseasons, but most of all, how it cooks, and it isn't easy to take care of. Well, time goes by quickly, it does. I've been cooking in this about three months. And folks, let me see, I started out frying some bacon in there, I fried some eggs in there, seared some steak in there, made scrambled eggs, made gravy. I even made a sauce there that had a little acid base to it just to see how this thing would stand up really after about three and a half months of cooking in it. And uh, hey, this thing has performed well, it has. Um, to me, it's probably, I would say the easiest skillet that I've had to season that accepted seasoning and held it well. Now, let's go back and recap this. I think you would call it the pros and the cons. Folks, number one, right off the bat, it accepted seasoning and held it well. The easiest skillet I've ever seasoned in my life besides some of them old Wagners and Griswolds maybe, but this thing using grapeseed oil make a great foundation. They had started it out with- So here's my question. Yes, ma'am. You So they started with flaxseed. <coughs> yes. You aren't a big fan of using flaxseed. Are you changing your mind or are you just saying like, it's great for a base, I, I would don't think, use it to reseason? I would think you could use it as an initial base coat, not like if you're starting out that way, but also as you use that over time and keep using it and keep using it, you build up a pretty good layer, you do, but then it becomes brittle and begins to crack just a little. So I really don't recommend it long term. You know, I've lifted cast iron for 30, nearly 40 years now, and I've got anything from 16s to big old 20 inch skillets. And when you can grab something that feels really good in your hand, coming in at four pounds, this thing is really a blessing. Yeah, and for me, I um, obviously have smaller hands, so cast iron can be a little tricky, but I also found that the handle was very ergonomic. And, yes. And it did feel good. That and it is, doesn't, a lot of times they can kind of cut into it. Yeah, because a lot of them, a lot of time will be square edged or yeah. have something on the bottom that's really sort of not friendly to your hand. Uh, but the handle is, is a great thing, and also, I think by splitting it here with the wishbone effect on it, it sort of makes it a little cooler. Now it's gonna get hot, but I don't think it heats quite as fast as just a straight handle. So when you got pros, you always got some cons. I don't care what it is. Might've been the best horse in a pen, but when you lead him out there and you use him a while, you think, oh, there's a little something here. Well, the number one thing that I found out about this is really the price. 
Now coming in at $249.95 for a 10 and a half inch skillet, and a lot of you right now are back in plumb away, crawling under the TV and thinking, this ain't for me. Folks, remember, cast iron is an investment. It may cost you something to start out with, but it's gonna pay you on the way back. Could you get by with a cheaper piece of cast iron? And we've done reviews on some that are cheaper. Uh, you can make it just fine. But you know, if you go to thinking about, this is a first time purchase for me that I'm buying cast iron. This really, I would say folks, I would recommend. It's user friendly, it seasons easy, it stays seasoned well, uh, and it's something that's gonna last forever. But also another, another con, and it's, this is not just this company at Marquette, this is nearly all the people that are making cast iron now that are making it by hand. This is a slow process. You know, you can't think, well, this is a great big foundry. It goes to 400,000 square foot building here, and we got all these people working here. It takes a little time to make these. So some of the availability on the stuff that you want from these companies, you may have to wait just a little while, or you may see that thing that says out of stock. Now, folks, y'all probably know this because y'all have been watching my channel, and if you're new to it, you'll find it out pretty quick. We're only going to do a review or use a piece of cast iron that's made in the United States of America. That's where the quality is. That's where you're going to get longevity from a piece of iron. It is. Now, we want to really thank the good folks at Marquette for sending us a piece of iron for what? To give away. Oh my gosh, who doesn't like a free cast iron skillet? Now everything you need to know to enter this little contest to win this free 10 and a half inch skillet, just go down there where it says on below the video, show more, hit it, click, click, go down there to where it says contest info and it will give you all the information that you need to enter to win this cast iron skillet. We want to thank the folks at Marquette uh, for supplying us this piece of cast iron to give away to y'all and for a great company. It's always good to see people that are making cast iron the old fashioned way. Be sure and check out their website for other products and look at all the stuff that they have. But as always, it is with honor, great pride and pleasure that I salute all our service men and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying back there. We appreciate you one and all. The rest of you, there ain't no food to feed the pups. I guess we could do just a little bit of dance right there. That's about it. But come on in here. Get in here close. We're going to give you a big old bear hug with a skillet. Mm. God bless you, each and every one, and I'll see you down the cast iron trail. Deep frying is one of the best things that you can ever do when you're uh, using new cast iron. We deep fried a lot of okra in this, a lot of potatoes, uh, and it really helps bond that seasoning. But something you got to realize too is Every time you get through using a piece of cast iron, you wash it and you dry it on heat and you re-season. 